Hello. Okay, here's my quick uh, little review thought on sampling as you get into this. So, what there are three key terms you have to know in sampling. Population. How did you identify your population? What's the total number of possible things to select from? Population of Canada, 32 million. It means there's 32 million people. And which people would you select from to run a poll? So the population is that big number, the big N, if you do it, see it in a calculation. Then there's this sample. It's the small set that represents the big population. And that is what you did in your screen here with, uh, uh, with the co vehicles in this picture. You've got the population. How do you make sense of how many are there? Is it okay to estimate? Do you need to count every one? What can you include and not include? So is what you, some of you chose to leave some out. I got numbers that range from 250 to 800, I think a thousand for the cars here. I don't know if you counted them all, if you counted the number of rows and estimate. The issue is not there that there is a right way. I'm not going to tell you there's a right way. I would estimate. I would estimate by counting the rows more or less and working out. That's just because it's the way I think. What's key to sampling is being able to explain why you made the selections you did and what's the logic behind it, why is it appropriate. But more importantly, so here's what I think the population is. And then the second is, and here's the sample. Here's the smaller set I'm gonna rely on to help to determine, to categorize this big number. So we would categorize by province when you go to elections. We categorize by population. There's one electoral district based on how many people live there. I think is kind of how it's sorted out across the country. In here with the cars, you would select it based on, you might, some of you went by the color of the vehicle, some went by the style of the vehicle, some went driven in, backed in, or versus nose in. Are they in a proper lane? Aren't they? Would you, so the things you choose not to count are sometimes called an outlier. There's sort of an extreme value that you would see, which you might see in numbers when you look at statistics, you'll see the outlier come up. But here the outlier might be that thing that you leave out. It might be that it doesn't really fit with the rest of your population, so you're not gonna include it. The second picture, the reason I've got now two more pictures up there for you is consider this. Here you look down, it looks a little cleaner. Could you break this into categories? Far less vehicles, would you, Actually, because it's a small amount, would you count every one? Would you then speak to the whole of the population and say, here's what it is? I don't need to take a subset because it's such a small group anyways. So you decide what you will include and what you won't. You need to explain why. Do you go by rows in here? When you look at the rows being considerably different, quite occupied, half occupied, quite occupied, half occupied, quite occupied, none, two. Would you leave out these two because they're an outlier? Would you leave out these because they're on the outside edge of the thought about what you want to think about in terms of cars parked in close? Maybe you do this big parking lot here, but you leave out these set because it's a side one. This car's not parked, maybe. It looks like it's in the driving lane. So those are the things you consider. What's key is you're able to explain. What's my population? What's my sample? And sampling is the way you went about deciding what's appropriate. That's key to it. It's the sample is what I want, the method, my mindset of grouping these in categories so that I have a representative sample. I looked at a smaller amount and they speak to, they reflect the big population. So you could have a homogenous sample, which is to say they're all vehicles. Um, in population, when it comes to election, homogenous is adults in Canada who have citizenship because it's Canadian government. Provincial elections would look different. You don't need citizenship. You need permanent status in order to vote in a provincial election, at least in Ontario. So is it homogenous? Are they seen as all the same or heterogeneous? The heterogeneous tends to be where we start to break down into the categories. We see diversity within a group and that becomes categories. We see that in people, could be age. This will come next week when you look at um, surveys. Age, gender, um, employment, those sorts of things help to tell us that we've got a nice broad representative sample for this place. In Toronto, you would want a heterogeneous sample, lots of variation. 
in small town Ontario, you may not need the same degree of variation. Some of what we think matters in Toronto may not matter in a, in a town where um, of the thousand people, 500 people have the same last name because they come from a small group of settlers from a long way, from some far off land 200 years ago, and they've just more or less stayed there. Those things start to impact your sampling. Deductive and inductive, you should be thinking about that. I like to think of deductive as the way we are satisfied, we prove things. This is the normal way of process. I think this and I go about proving it. It fits well in hypothesis testing. It's a way we do it. I love my brother, he's been my brother a long time ago. Premise, he's my brother. We've been together a long time. Conclusion is I can rely on my brother. That's deductive. It belief fits well with deductive. I prove my belief. Inductive is a different mindset. Inductive recognizes the possibility I'm wrong. And I think this is more like hope. I think that I hope that I can trust my brother. Same set of circumstances. Because he's been, is my brother, because he's been around for a long time, I feel pretty confident I can trust him to, if I collapse and I call, can get a phone number, a text or a phone call to him, he'll get me help. I might be able to consider that, rely on it. But in the inductive one, I recognize the possibility I could be wrong. So it's got a little more sense like hope versus belief. Um, when you're looking at these PowerPoints, be sure and look at the words in the boxes. Those are key terms that you should absolutely have in your head. If you hear the word population, that should mean something to you. So what are we analyzing? How are we doing it? Why? Why do we pick this particular group of things? Why do we look at this thing? Why do the, are these things appropriate to the topic I'm looking at? You look at every element, every sample, every library book, every car, potentially in a random sample. Random is quite interesting. It's a coin toss. Random is it's kind of 50-50. That's what it means to be random. It could be any one of. In a true random sample, it might be the same number shows up twice. So that'll come back again in the stats week. Just bear in mind that random is not quite so significant as we might think. Or it might seem random, but in fact, it might be a systemic process I'm using. When you think about the cars you selected in that large population of vehicles in the first picture, how much were you selecting in a organized, structured way? Did you try to select randomly in order to determine what's the population, how much are vans, how many are big trucks, how many are cars, how many are yellow, how many are white, how many are black, how many are red, how many are SUVs, how many are GP things, how many are nose in versus backed in, those sorts of things that you decided matter. Did you do a random sort of selection within your categories, within the row, maybe you categorized by row, so you did random, or did you try and include them all? They're all acceptable ways to do it. You just have to explain it. I want you to consider this one. This is categorized, so here we are, Babby. Um, this is a different version of similar book, Basics of Social Research. Would it be easier to deal with your categories in a population like this, although it could get pretty far at what point they say outlier is way too far. I'm only going to look at the ones that are within reach. Within reach. So I'm going to use a snowball sample. I'm going to talk to one person who's going to introduce me to two or three others. From those, I will get others. And I will proceed from through that process of connection. So here I might say snowball. I'm going to look at the blue. I'm going to look at only the blues colors. I'm going to look at the red ones only. I'm going to leave out the rest. I'm only interested in red. How do I decide to break this down? This is broken into categories by color-coded umbrellas, essentially. But how do I want to look at that population when it comes to me doing it? So that's what sampling's about. If you look at the PowerPoint slides, you'll see that um, in there. Qualitative versus quantitative. Qualitative, quality, quantitative, quantity, many numbers. Small numbers, dig deep into the material, and that'll start to show up next week a little bit. Um, and when we get to interviewing, quantitative, large numbers, so we feel confident in it. Those sort of go. This next set of slides is just an example that shows you what a stratified population looks like. Um, you don't have to do any math in this. The math is there. There's 100 students in a classroom. They're broken up into these four different programs. It looks like this. So we'll come back to that again in stats, the, uh, what a chart does for us and how to weigh them in. So don't be concerned about these too much. Have a look, see if it makes sense, the stratified versus 
proportionally stratified. If you look, the pi looks the same here. This pi looks the same as this pi. <coughs> They're proportional, the same percentages. This has the whole of the 100 students in it. This only has a smaller sample, which is made up of 20 students. So disproportional gets to looking at, I don't need to worry about having it in percentage wise. This might speak to the topic. Your topic would help determine this. A topic like this is, I might wanna know whether my uh, examples fit with my student body. So I need to know who's in my classroom so that the samples reflect well on who's in that group. Might be that it doesn't matter. The question is, am I any good at teaching? And now it doesn't matter what group they're in. We wanna make sure you get a few from every group. So you don't need proportional though anymore. You just need students in the room who's, who are trying to learn saying, I learned something with this guy or it was a waste of my time. That's sort of a very rudimentary sense of what sampling gets. If you come away with that kind of thought, then I think you're in a happy place. So those two pictures that I added in are worth a chat. I think these are worth talking about. Discuss how you would break them down differently. Think about the outlier. Think a little more about inclusion and not inclusion. Chat about it. Hopefully you come away with something solid by the end of the week. And next week we'll start into surveys and I will be on again. <laughs> Bye for now. Oh, how do I touch the button? Just a second. Uh, stop video. Oh dear, I don't know how to stop it. Stop video.